I wish I could say that my vague knowledge of abhorrent labor practices and detrimental environmental impacts are the sole reason I stopped buying fast fashion, once and for all. But it's not. I knew about that stuff, vaguely. I knew there are people, mostly women of color, in countries on the other side of the world that I know nothing about, working for unlivable wages and horrible conditions, making clothes that I can buy online that will get shipped directly to my doorstep. I knew there was some crazy statistic of how many clothes end up in landfills each year. How clothes from places like Xi'an are poisoned with lead. How much fossil fuels are emitted into the atmosphere each year because of the fast fashion industry. I didn't know the details because I didn't really want to know. Because if I really knew the details, I'd feel bad about myself. How can I call myself a feminist when I'm contributing to women experiencing a type of poverty I've never even seen before? How can I say that I care about the environment when the clothes I wear directly harm it? If I knew the details, I'd have to change my lifestyle to what I thought would be to my detriment. I'd no longer be able to buy tons of cool clothes whenever I wanted to have them. How tragic. Or, even more insidiously, I could know the details and do nothing to change my shopping habits. When I was younger, I had this belief that I'm not responsible for the failings of an entire global economy. My individual consumption, no matter how noble or detrimental, will never make a difference when massive corporations are killing us and our planet and no one seems to be doing much to stop it. I didn't want to find out which one I would choose, so for a long time, I didn't learn the details. What I did learn before I learned the details is how to shop on Poshmark. I am obsessed with clothes. I always have been. I sometimes wonder if it's genetic. My mom and my mom's mom and my dad's mom especially all love clothes. I think about clothes all the time. I think about clothes as I lull myself to sleep every night. What am I going to wear tomorrow? What would I wear if I had unlimited money and a glamorous place to go? What combination of clothes in my closet have I not thought of before? It consumes me, and I'm not ashamed of it. It makes me happy, and it's part of my creative expression. What I am ashamed of is how my clothing obsession is in direct conflict with my moral and political belief system. Consumerism and overconsumption are both the byproduct and the cause of an economic system and social culture that creates and sustains poverty, misogyny, violence, systemic racism, and environmental collapse. It cannot be overstated. I live in a small, relatively rural town on the very outskirts of a small working class city. Most people here do not really care about fashion in the way people in large metropolitan areas care about fashion. And that's part of its charm. But because of that, there is very little vintage shopping near me. Thrift stores are very hit or miss, but even so, you just can't easily find really great secondhand pieces in my area. When I went to college in Pittsburgh, everything changed. There are vintage stores everywhere. They're cheap and they're amazing. Suddenly, I was able to buy 50s party dresses and 60s winter coats and 70s jumpsuits and 80s trousers any weekend I felt like it, usually for no more than $20 or $30 a piece. I started learning how to identify what era a piece of clothing might be from based on the brand, silhouette, or type of fabric. And then the pandemic happened, and I moved back to my hometown, and the vintage shopping ended. I was left with strip malls and the internet. So I tried shopping on Poshmark, and I didn't really like it. I couldn't figure out how to find exactly what I wanted for a long time. It had the same feeling as walking into an enormous thrift store and having to sort through thousands of articles of clothing until you maybe find something halfway decent. I find that kind of secondhand shopping exhausting and stressful. I prefer to look for specific items in a curated selection. 
So I went back to my old ways, buying fast fashion online or at the mall when anthropology was having a sale. For a long time, I never thought of myself as a part of the very problem I'm criticizing. I don't go on massive shopping sprees, I wear my clothes, I take care of them, I keep them for years, I do my best to only buy things I actually like, but still, I have too many clothes to even fit in my closet. Deep cleaning my room after coming home from college and combining all the clothes I got in Pittsburgh with the clothes I left here from high school made me realize that. And also, I'm a woman now. I'm on the other side of a pandemic that completely turned my life upside down. I'm not the same person I was when I was curating my wardrobe in high school and college. I'm trying to figure out what clothes I even like to wear as an adult. There needs to be some turnover. You're not gonna do the ceiling, right? No. There. Like that. Will that hold any weight? Oh yeah. It'll hold there, now it'll hold even more. <laughs> okay. You just electrocute the place. Because I'm hanging it off of a high voltage wire. Let's do an example. Okay. RIP to this anthropology sweater. So I'm in my parents' basement right now and these are all of the clothes I'm trying to list and sell on Poshmark. I took all of these clothes out of my closet over the course of the past year of living here because they either aren't my style anymore, they don't fit or have never fit me, um, or I just know that I'm like not going to wear them anymore for whatever reason. And I am so embarrassed that I have this many clothes that I'm trying to get rid of. This is literally an entire closet worth of clothes. And I probably have more in my closet because it's still somehow packed to the brim. But I'm gonna try my best to get it done, even though I'm dreading this entire process. Yeah. So it's loosely organized by coats, shirts, pants, um, more pants and coats and shirts and then I have a bunch of shoes and on this side I have dresses that I need to sell these are more dresses or dress type things and purses and then all these shoes as well it's literally crazy this I'm really sad to see go this is a Levi's Sherpa jacket that I bought new and this is an example of like something I'm trying to not do anymore this just never fit me right like the sleeves are a little too short I'm 5'10 so that happens sometimes um it's just like too small even though it's a size small and I normally wear an extra small and I should have like been honest with myself and returned it but I just kept it and I never wore it that much because it just never fit me right. And this is just like so wasteful. Like I'm like wasteful of my money and like wasteful of the this product. Like I really regret um, buying this and not returning it. So I hope it finds a good home. But this is an example of just like stupidity that I'm trying to be more mindful of as I shop for clothes now. I think I used to have this idea that fast fashion is a necessary evil of being middle class because I can't afford to buy actual couture that's handmade in small batches using sustainable materials. So I thought my only other choice was to buy cheap and cheaply made clothes. But now that I think about it, I think I actually could afford to buy more sustainable brands if I had more knowledge of what those brands even are. And more importantly, if I cut down my consumption and only purchased maybe five or so pieces of clothing per year, and that was my entire budget. But I'm still trying to change my mindset and my consumption habits so that I'm able to buy more sustainable clothes. So I think shopping at Poshmark is a good in-between for me for now, but that's where I'm trying to get to. So actually my original intention for this video before I started doing more research and writing the script was going to be about how I was selling my clothes on Poshmark, which I have started doing and I've only sold one thing, 
Um, and it's a lot harder than I thought it was going to be. And I think that's partly because I'm still learning how to do it and I don't have a lot of followers on there, although I've gained a lot since I started listing my items and they have been getting more traction, but it's just like a, it's not an immediate process. But I think the main reason is that there are simply too many clothes for the amount of people buying them. There's just too many clothes on this planet and the amount of clothes on Poshmark alone is not proportional to the amount of people um, buying clothes on there. So I think it's really hard to sell. It takes a lot of marketing and even then you're not guaranteed to sell your stuff. So that's a whole nother project that I have to figure out of how am I going to get rid of these clothes in the best way that I can between selling them on Poshmark and donating them to good places. Um, so yeah, I'm still trying to figure it out. I think there's an idea that's prevalent among my generation of young people that we don't have to take individual responsibility for practices that harm other people and our planet. There is no denying that the generations before us have failed us in profound ways. I live in a place like most Americans where you have to drive to get anywhere. Technically, I could choose to move closer to the small city I live near and I could get rid of my car and bike everywhere in order to reduce my carbon footprint. But this would come at immense personal sacrifice to my quality of life. And what I'm trying to convey is that it doesn't come as a personal sacrifice to me to stop buying fast fashion. And that's because I can find things on Poshmark that are actually cheaper than what I would buy new at the mall or online that are practically new and in great condition. So there's really no reason not to. I kept shopping on Poshmark and I figured out how to adjust my search criteria to find things I wanted. And to my surprise, I would go on Poshmark and search, for example, acne leather jacket. And literally hundreds of identical items would come up, all in good condition. This is the straw that broke the camel's back. I look at these clothes that I want to sell, that I have meticulously maintained for many years. I wore these clothes and felt one of a kind. Surely they can sell for almost what I bought them for on a site like this but I realize now that they're not one of a kind. Even higher end brands like Acme, Anthropology, and Rag and & Bone are overproducing items that nobody wants anymore. Shopping on Poshmark is what actually made me conceptualize the sheer amount of clothing on our planet. And because of this sustained overproduction, my clothes, no matter how special they are to me, are not unique. So I wanted to show an example of how I bought something on Poshmark that was the same price or cheaper as something I could buy brand new. So this is a swimsuit that I bought, which seems a little bit odd to buy a swimsuit secondhand, but this is actually brand new. Um, it still has the tag on it and it still has the like sticker on the crotch. Um, so this has never been worn before. And this is a Wild Fox swimsuit, which is a pretty good brand. I would say this would retail for like maybe $50 to $60 brand new. And I got this for $35, including shipping on Poshmark. So I'm going to go online now and see like what I could find that's that same price brand new, just to compare. So I'm sitting at my computer right now and I'm going to go to H&M to see what like a one piece swimsuit would cost. Look, swim. Cause I actually don't know. Okay, swim and beachwear and then swimsuits. Okay, here's one. It's like a printed one piece. It is $35. So the same price that I paid for my brand new Wild Fox swimsuit. And let's see the materials. It was produced either in Bangladesh or Vietnam. And it's 80% polyester, which is terrible for the environment. All of our products are made by independent suppliers, often in developing countries where our presence can make a real difference. Our business helps to create jobs and independence, particularly for women, consequently lifting people out of poverty and contributing to economic growth. That is a load of bullshit, if I ever heard one. It's like they're confirming everything 
that I'm saying and everything that these articles are saying about them, but like making it seem not bad and like they're actually helping the cause. It's like crazy actually. Ugh. I think one of the main drawbacks to this type of shopping is that you can't try on the clothes before you buy them. So you have to make sure that they fit. And I haven't had a problem with this and I know it's partly because of my privilege as a thin person that clothes fit me pretty easily. But at the same time, I'm 5'10", so I have trouble finding things that are long enough to fit my limbs. And I have really narrow shoulders, so we all have our quirks and everyone's body is different. So the way that I cope with that is I take measurements of all the like main areas you need for clothes shopping. So like my shoulder, my bust, my waist, my hips, my inseam, and usually sellers will post measurements in the description of a piece, but if they don't, you can always ask them to post measurements and then you can compare your measurements or you can measure a piece of clothing that you already have and see how it compares with the piece that you'd like to buy. And I think that's a pretty accurate way to tell if something will fit you. I haven't bought anything that didn't fit me because I went through that process and I did my due diligence shopping for all this stuff. So I think the main takeaway is that this type of shopping takes longer and takes more thought than um, shopping at a traditional store online or shopping in person because you really have to take your time to make sure that something will fit and consider um, all the factors at play. So if it's important to you to stop buying fast fashion like it's important to me, I think learning how to buy clothes that you know will fit you um, is an important skill to master. So my process for finding a piece on Poshmark really starts with envisioning what I want. So I look in my closet or I just think about what I have and I think about a piece that would complete an outfit that I want to make. And I envision that piece as specific as possible and then I search that specific piece. So for example, I wanted a way to elevate just like jeans and a t-shirt and I was imagining like a tweed Chanel jacket, which I cannot afford to buy but I thought of the qualities of that jacket that I like. So um, like black and white, tweed, padded, zippered jacket, something like that. So I was using those search terms to find the style of jacket that I wanted. And it helps if you have a specific brand, but if not, I think envisioning a very specific piece and then searching those specific search terms is the way to yield exactly what you want and not have to go digging and digging through like thousands of items. So once you make your search on Poshmark, it's helpful if you filter it even more using the filters. So you can go to the category and filter by the specific type of clothing that you're looking for. Even if that description is in the search that you performed, it helps if you add it in the filter. And then you can also go to the size and filter by your specific size. And these filters I find help really yield exactly what I'm looking for, or at least the types of things that I'm looking for in my size range. So then you're not sifting through things that like don't even apply to you. And then if you have that specific item in mind, it's really quite easy to find it if it's available. It is sort of mind blowing to me in a sickening way that companies like Poshmark, ThreadUp, Depop, and eBay exist as a band-aid for this problem of overconsumption that is exploiting people and killing our planet. I've decided that I'm not buying new clothes anymore, and I've stuck to that pretty consistently for the past six months and counting. But my actual clothing consumption hasn't decreased that much. Even though I'm selling clothes on Poshmark that I don't want anymore, I'm still buying clothes at the same rate I was when I wasn't shopping completely secondhand. Is this a bad thing? I don't really have an answer. Our world is so different now than it was when my mom was a teenager and had only one pair of shoes for the school year or when my grandma was a secretary and sewed her own blouses for work. Excess of stuff is not a problem that can really be fixed once it happens. Those 56 million tons of clothing don't just magically go away, no matter how much goes in a landfill. They get hoarded in closets, bought and sold on the internet, put in anonymous donation boxes and shipped to third world countries, 
eventually they'll also probably end up in a landfill. I think like most problems in our society that are often really connected, there isn't really a solution once it gets this bad. The only solution is prevention. And to me, for the first time in my adult life, I'm really trying to take responsibility for how I contribute to these problems. And I'm not perfect, and I never will be, but I do think that my wardrobe is a great place to start.